Ladies and gentlemen, friends and relatives, unaccustomed as I am, um, I'm going to attempt this. There are people who are not with us today, who are greatly missed. Gemma's dad, Fred, should have been making a speech today. He would have been so proud. As am I of our daughter looking so beautiful and radiant as a bride. Gemma, where do I begin? To say how much I love you and how happy I am. I can now call you my wife. Writing this part was a little easier because I switched off my brain, which doesn't take a lot, to be fair, and let my heart do the talking. Words can't describe how beautiful you look today. Just knowing I'm sharing the rest of my life with you makes me already feel that I've succeeded in life. From the day that Gemma was born, her dad adored her and she could twist him round her little finger. <laughs> and as she grew and developed her own personality, so she also showed how much she had inherited from him. Like her no-nonsense sense of approach to things. Or why ten words when one will do. The latter was pointed out when Gemma was at first school by a teacher at parents' evening who commented that Gemma could not see the need to write a sentence if she could use a one-word answer. Her dad was in total support of her and said it was the teacher that was the one that was in the wrong. <laughs>
If you're family or work colleagues, you will likely know the groom as Andrew, which is just wrong, so we'll refer to the groom by his proper name of Luby. <laughs> Most of us in this room cannot believe that this day has finally come. <laughs> the groom has, after many, 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 many years, uh, managed to convince his beautiful bride to marry him. We're not sure how, as we all know, the groom is clearly punching above his weight. <laughs> when the groom asked Greg and myself to be his best men, we were deeply humbled and touched that he'd asked us to share best men duties and to say a few words on his wedding day. But far more importantly, we were well surprised and dumbfounded that he'd stupidly entrust both of us with this part, special part of his wedding day. So in preparation for today, understanding it's traditional to embarrass the groom in the best man's speech, we thought, where's the challenge in that? Maybe has proved on countless occasions before now that he's more than capable of embarrassing himself all on his own. Therefore, we prepared a short death by PowerPoint presentation to ensure this job is completed successfully. Okay, right. Tommy and I first met Luby when we were teenagers <laughs> in, in the mid-1990s. So, regrettably, we never knew Luby as a kid. But, apparently, a legend has it and most of you won't believe this, but Luby was a disproportionately large child in the 1960s. <laughs> now, we've only managed to source a couple of photos of Luby as a child, but as you can see, he was almost too large for his hygiene. You also, may or may not believe this, but his mum and dad actually said Luby stopped growing around 10 years old. Luby, don't worry, I haven't been able to raid the family vaults of actual embarrassing photos of you as a kid as well. We just didn't know he was a kid, so that's it. Oh! oh <laughs> so, apart from these few, no one can deny Luby's first calling alone was to be the. Milky Bar Kid! So, fast forward a few years to a lovely piece of local newspapers wrote on both myself and Luby after we decided. <laughs> racing down the M5 after returning back from the south coast in convoy in the middle of the night in two highly modified hot patches. <laughs> Ultimately, after a sizable police chase that Luba and I didn't even realise we were part of, we innocently pulled up in the middle of a police road blockade outside Webb's garden centre. Both thinking, wow, something's going down here, this is serious, someone's in some serious poop. Uh, little did we realise about eight police cars have been chasing us, uh, they promptly plonked us, pulled us over, plonked us in the back of the cars, and told us we'd be going to Crown Court. We thanked them for the time and left licenses intact for now. We could keep going into so, so many funny stories that include even more stupidity from the groom's dub, especially as we have had some excellent and truly memorable times together. And I know that we will continue to have more in the future. It's been a real privilege to be one of your mates and best men today. Uh, so thank you, deep down, thank you. We know how much Gemma means to you and that you will always be there for her. And I know that you will make a great house husband. <laughs> Hang on, Tom, you've had a date. That's a new one. <laughs> so I'll last you to today is the toast. So may you all be upstanding. May your love be modern enough to survive the times and fresh enough to last forever. So do me and Gemma start the new life. Let's toast the new husband.
Here's to the present for all that you share. And here's to the future for all you've, looked, you've got to look forward to. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your glasses and join with me in wishing the newlyweds a long, healthy and very happy future together. To Gemma and Luby, Mr and Mrs Luby. Cheers. Cheers.